Hi, I'm Cassie with Me Time, and this is a mini tutorial for the schoolhouse from the Collectible Christmas Holiday Village. So the schoolhouse is made the same way as all of the rest of the houses. If you have any questions on how to put the house together, feel free to go ahead and find our tutorial about the village church linked below. So today, what's different about this schoolhouse is this bell tower and the bell tower roof. And so I'm going to stitch those with you today. So what I already have stitched for you is the main piece of the schoolhouse. So we're going to set that aside right now, and then we're going to start with the bell tower. We already have our light mesh cutaway stabilizer hooped, and we're going to put it into the machine for our placement line. So for the placement line, I'm going to stitch it in a dark gray thread. That is just for this video purpose so that you can see what we're stitching. However, when you make it at home, feel free to use a neutral colored thread. All right, now that we've stitched the placement line, we're going to take our shape form interfacing. We're going to completely cover that and we're going to tape it in place. This is so that it doesn't move while it's in the machine. I'm gonna keep my thread, a gray colored thread for now, just so that you can see the placement line and the scoring guides. We'll go ahead and stitch this. This is machine step two. Okay, so what we've done is we've stitched that tack down line and then this has three scoring guides. So we're gonna remove our tape and we're going to cut around the outside edge of the shape form here close to the stitches without cutting any of the stitch lines. We'll just take our scissors and give it a nice trim. Now that we've trimmed around our shape form, we're going to cut the scoring guides. We're gonna grab our ruler and our rotary cutter and get to work on that. So I prefer to stand up when I cut these scoring guides because I can get a little bit better of an angle. So I'm gonna stand, we're gonna put the ruler right in the middle and we're going to cut all the way through the stabilizer and the shape form. I know it seems strange to do it, but go right ahead. It's just going to help make our hinge and corners better. So we're going to cut through that one and the middle one and now the last one. All right, all done. So now we're going to put this back in the machine and we're going to stitch the placement line for our fabric. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna switch my thread because I don't want it to show out when we have it on our building. All right, so now that we've stitched the placement line, we're gonna take our already starched fabric and we're gonna cover that placement line completely. And we're gonna take this in place really well so that it doesn't move or buckle on us while we're stitching. We'll just put one up here, and then I like to smooth it across to make sure it lays nice and flat. Another one here. And again, I'm gonna smooth it so that it lays flat. Put a tape on this side, and then smooth it to the other side, and put a tape there. That way, it's as flat as I can get it. And we're gonna return it back to the machine for the tack down line. So you can see my stitch lines that we use for the scoring guides through the fabric just a little bit. That's because I use that dark gray thread just to make sure that you could see those. So we're just gonna ignore that for a moment because when you make yours, you're gonna be using your light colored thread. Machine step five is stitching the fold lines. At this point, we're going to change our thread to our mint colored thread. This is going to be used for machine step six, which is stitching the bell chamber fill. Machine step seven is stitching the inner bell fill. We're gonna change our thread for that step and go ahead and do it. All 
Okay, now that that one's done, we're going to move right along to machine step eight, which is stitching the outer bell fill. We're going to change our thread and get to it. Okay, and that was our last machine step. So at this point, we have our cute little bell and we can take it out of our hoop. And then we're gonna trim around it and prep it for use on our schoolhouse. We're gonna leave about five eighths of an inch down here. And then we're gonna cut very close right here on the sides. And I'm just gonna get rid of that stabilizer and then we're gonna cut above, again, leaving that space for gluing on all of these peaks. So just leave that extra space. And then as we come to the other side, we're gonna stitch or cut very, very close to the stitch line, just like that. We're gonna cut here, right there in that center. We're gonna cut the top off above the stitch line, being very careful not to cut, the, cut those stitches. Same thing here. We're gonna cut a little bit of an angle there. And then we're gonna cut notches here at both these places here so that we can fold the fabric back properly. So a notch there and then another notch right here. Now, if you'll notice, the bottom also has a design. It's not just flat. So we're gonna go to the bottom and cut some more notches. So we're gonna cut straight up here. And we're gonna cut straight up here. We're gonna cut a little angle there and a little angle there. At this point, we're gonna get our favorite glue and our clips so that we can glue the top and bottom edges. We're gonna make sure we don't glue the left and right edges because those are for sewing. So we're gonna take it and flip it over. We're gonna add our glue. I like to do one side at a time, so I'll do the bottom and then I will go back and do the top. So I'll set that there. And then I'm going to take the fabric and pull it taut against that shape form because that's gonna give me my exact shape. And then I'm gonna pull it and keep clipping and gluing as I move along. Again, I want that fabric against that shape form. So we're gonna clip it and let it dry. I like to use the flat end on this side too, to kind of give me that better um, surface for the glue to adhere. Okay, once the bottom's done, we're gonna move up to the top. I'm gonna add glue. Be a little bit generous so that it can go through the stabilizer to the fabric and make sure it all stays in place. We're gonna fold and clip. We're gonna continue folding against that shape form and clipping until we have everything in place. Then we're gonna set it aside to dry. While the bell tower is drying, we're going to make the bell tower roof. I've already hooped the light mesh cutaway stabilizer and loaded the embroidery file into the machine. I also put in a gray thread so that you can see my placement line and tack down lines at the very beginning here. That is just so that you can see them on camera. However, when you do your own at home, feel free to use a natural colored thread. We're gonna take our stabilizer and put it into the machine and stitch the placement line. All right, after we've stitched that placement line with the visible thread, we're going to place our shape form interfacing, completely covering the placement line and tape it in place. This is so that it doesn't shift or move while we are embroidering in the machine. Once we have it taped in place, we can return it for the tack down line. And this tack down line will also stitch those scoring guides.
Okay, so we've stitched that tack down line in the scoring guide. We're gonna take our scissors at this point and we're going to trim around the shape form, being careful not to clip any of the stitches. So I'm just gonna remove the tape real quick and get cutting. We'll just come in at the side and make sure that we cut nice and close. Like usual, I'm gonna stand up because I do a better job cutting this if I do. We're going to cut all the way through the shape form and stabilizer. We're gonna extend the cut a little bit past the shape form so that we know that it is cut all the way through. And then we're gonna put it back in the machine for the placement line. After we've stitched the placement line, we're gonna quickly place that fabric, completely covering the placement line, and we're gonna tape it in place so that it doesn't move or shift while we are stitching. I'm gonna make sure, I know it's a small piece of fabric though that it's taped really well. So I'm gonna put the first piece of tape on, smooth the fabric across, and then stick the next one on. And then just for good measure, I'm gonna put one on the left and right sides as well, just to make sure that it is exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna return it to the machine for the tack down line. Now the tack down line is done in that mint colored thread so it matches the roof. Machine step five is stitching the center fold line. Machine step six is stitching the decorative lights on the roof. We're gonna change our thread to that yellow color and then continue on stitching. All right, now that we got our super cute lights, they're so adorable on, we're gonna do the next part, which is putting our roof eaves in place. So we're just going to lay those on top, covering the fabric, making sure that that half inch fold is on top of each other and in the center of our roof. And then we're going to tape it in place exactly as shown. So we're gonna put a piece of tape here on each end. And then we're gonna take another piece and cover up that fold so that our presser foot doesn't catch it. Now that we have our roof all taped together, we're gonna to return it to the machine, make sure that our thread matches our roof and we're gonna stitch the final outline stitch. Okay, and with that, we're done with the embroidery machine. And we can pull off this tape and then we'll take our project out of the hoop. So now we're gonna remove it from the hoop. And then just like all the other roofs, we're going to trim around it, leaving about a quarter inch seam. I like to do it with scissors, but you are welcome to do it with your rotary cutter. We'll just cut around. And get rid of that stabilizer. And then we want really nice points on our roof. So we're gonna cut right close to the corners, making sure that we do not cut the stitch lines. And then we're gonna also angle it about an inch to make sure that we have all of that extra bulk removed from the seam. This way we can have really nice crisp corners. I'm gonna do that on all sides. And then we're gonna do my favorite part, which is turning the roof. All right, so this little roof, we turn exactly the same as all of the others, except I'm only gonna put one finger inside and we're gonna put our thumbs on the end and then we're gonna push and flip. Ta-da! Same thing, flip it over, put one finger in, that's all that will fit, thumbs on the side and flip it over. Then we're going to get our point turner and we're gonna straighten out these corners and make them look nice and crisp. Do this gently. There is only one layer of fabric here, so we don't wanna puncture it, but we want them to look nice and pretty. So we're gonna move things around, and make sure it looks good. And then at this point, we're gonna starch it and press it and prep it to go on the bell tower. Now that we've finished the bell tower roof, we're gonna return back to the bell tower itself. We've had it clipped and drying, while we made the other part. So we can take the clips off now. 
And then I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a press. I like to make sure that I set my glue and all my seams by pressing it just gently on the back where I had all of those flaps gluing. And make sure everything's nice and dry and ready to go. Then I'm gonna flip it over and just press out any signs that the clips were there because sometimes they leave just a little bit of a mark. And now this is ready to be assembled. Now that we have our bell tower all prepped and ready to go, we're gonna sew the seam. So we're gonna just place both ends on top of the other, and then we're gonna clip it in place so that we can stitch that side seam line. I like to do one on both sides just to help hold it in place. We're gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew that seam. We're gonna line up this side and then make sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of our stitching. And just follow that sewing guide that we stitched in the first step. Okay. And then we can simply, just like the houses, give it a little pop. And using one of the points, we're going to turn that through first and start the turn and then Follow it up with that second side and turn that bell tower. Now, just like with any of the houses, it has a little bit of wrinkling from being turned. So we're going to starch and press it so that it lays nice and flat. We're going to just fold the corner and then we're going to take our iron and press. And because it's a small piece, we kind of press the whole thing at the same time. And then we're going to flip and do the other side. And we're going to continue around until we have all sides pressed. So again, starch and press. Flip for the other side and press. And then to the next one. All of a sudden, we have a cute little sturdy looking bell tower. At this point, we're gonna be ready to start assembling the school. We already have the roof and the main schoolhouse ready to go. So we're going to first glue the bell tower on. Now, the biggest trick is to make sure that you center it. The nice thing about the schoolhouse is these little scallops kind of hint right at where the center is and where we're going to place the bell tower. So I just make sure that I have the center of my bell tower lining up with the center of my lights and it works out pretty good. So we're gonna start with the bottom and we're gonna add our glue. And then we're gonna just press and hold it in place until it's dry. Make sure that the bell is on the side with the door and we're gonna line that up and then we'll hold it in place. I like to always just double check, make sure that it's all looking the way I want it to. And then we're just gonna hang out for a minute and then we can attach the roof. Okay, so this little tiny baby roof, we're going to bend right on that center fold line. And I want it to crease really well. And since it's made out of fabric, we can crease it a little bit more. So we're gonna give it some starch and we're going to press that crease in so that it folds nice and pretty for the top of the schoolhouse. Then we're going to flip it over and do the other side. All right, looking pretty good. Sometimes I'll just take and rub the tip of my iron just a little bit more right on that crease just to make it a little bit sharper. All right, now we're going to make sure that the eave that's on top is toward the front and the eave that's on bottom is toward the back. So we're going to add our glue just along this top edge and then the sides. And then we're going to put it on the other top edge and then this one we're going to place as centered as we can and make sure that the points are all lined up and then we're going to hold it in place while it dries. 
Thanks so much for joining me today for this mini tutorial about the village schoolhouse from the Collectible Christmas Holiday Village. I hope that it was helpful and that you find success when you make your own project. Feel free to like and subscribe and follow for more content. And go enjoy some well-deserved me time.